Look at that, this Z70 robot vacuum is organizing the shoes around my house all by itself. But is it even any good at picking things up and is the future of robot vacuums a claw arm? Well, I'm gonna use it around my house to see if it can handle the wrath of my three little kids. This is the Roborock Saros Z70. You know, the robot vacuum with the claw arm. And I've been so excited to try this out in my house ever since seeing it at CES. I partnered with Roborock for this video, but I'm still gonna show you the good and the bad. So yeah, enough of all this talk. Let's try out this robot arm. At CES, Roborock said we would be able to use our phone to manually control the arm. You know, like a little remote control. So of course, the first thing I did when I set up the Z70 was use that claw arm. It's surreal watching an arm pop out of the robot vacuum in my own house. You know in the movie Alien when it pops out of him in the dinner scene? It's like that, it's crazy. Of course there are the standard remote controls to drive the vacuum around, but there are now arm controls too. It has four different movements. Rotate the claw, move the arm up and down, or move it forward and backwards. Lastly, the ability to close and open the claw. I was using it with my kids and it was so much fun. Cleaning up the toys is like playing a video game. We were fighting over who gets to clean uh, up. Can I have a turn? No. Allie, they're not sharing with me. There's a camera on the end of the arm so the vacuum knows what it's grabbing. I can also change that camera view while controlling the arm. It's pretty sweet. Plus it comes in handy to check on the house while away. I've done this on my previous Roborock vacuums when we're out of town and it comes in clutch. So this extra camera angle on the arm is a great bonus. Not only that, but there's a light on the arm too. So seeing in the dark is no problem at all. The claw is actually pretty strong. It can pick up items up to 300 grams and I was curious to see if I could manually pick up heavier objects and it could. So the arm is stronger than Roborock gives it credit for, but it won't crush your finger. I tried. Dad, make it pinch your finger. No! I triple dog dare you. Well, that's a slight breach of etiquette. Fine. Ah! Of course, there are sensors to keep everyone safe. There's one on top of the vacuum to stop the arm from popping out. And there are sensors on the arm joints, so if something is getting pinched between the folding arm, it will stop. I also tested this, and look, I still have all my fingers, so... I'm not worried about it being dangerous around my three little kids. And the hardware also feels very solid. Roborock says the arm only takes up 10% of the vacuum, so they were still able to fit everything in here. There is one main thing that Roborock did not do on the Sorrow Z70 that they did do on the Sorrow's 10 and 10R, and I'll get to that in a minute. Because first, we have to test how good the arm is at automatically picking up shoes, socks, and anything else around the house. One of the biggest criticisms I hear about a vacuum with a robot arm is, I already clean up before my vacuum goes around. And that's a completely valid point. I also try to clean up before my vacuum goes around. But I have three kids and one of them is very cute but has a personal mission to leave every pair of shoes and socks she has around the house. I kid you not, at any given point during the day there's about 10 pairs of shoes and 10 pairs of socks scattered around the house and this is after us asking her to clean up and trying to help out ourselves. It's just a losing battle. And even though Roborock vacuums have been getting better and better at object avoidance, they're not perfect. Sometimes it recognizes a sock and it avoids it, but then it bumps into something else that pushes the sock into the way and then it jams on the main brush. It's super frustrating. Well, the Z70 has a much better approach, so it's much less likely to get stuck. When it starts cleaning and it spots a sock, it immediately grabs it and moves it to a safe spot. That way it doesn't get too close to the sock and accidentally get stuck. So much better. Roborock provides a storage bin with a vacuum and you can set where it is on the map. Then the vacuum will put the socks and tissues in the storage bin so it's safely out of the way. It's pretty cool that it can just automatically do this all by itself. If the storage box is in the corner of your house, it can take a while for the vacuum to bring the sock all the way to it. So I would think about putting in the storage bin in a central location. And if you don't like how the storage bin looks, you could just have it drop it off in a certain spot in your house. After the vacuum is done cleaning and it's moved all the socks and tissues out of the way, the vacuum does a follow-up cleaning. Start follow-up cleaning where it moves the shoes a short distance to a spot where it's already cleaned, and then it finishes cleaning where the shoes were. 
This is great because it doesn't take a lot of time to move the shoes and it gets the entire floor clean. But the Z70 takes things to another level and it will sort certain objects on the ground like shoes for you. That's right. It will take the shoes and carry them to the shoe storage zone, aka the shoe pile in the house. So instead of nagging my daughter all day to put her shoes away, the vacuum will just handle it. It's insane. We still have our kids do chores around the house and learn responsibility, but I'm not going to complain if a robot is going to do annoying tasks around the house that no one wants to do. What's really crazy is that it can pick up my kids' toys and put them away from me too. What? It almost feels wrong seeing this little doll being carried away with this claw arm. But I'm so happy a robot is finally picking up my kids' toys for me and putting them away. I know someone right now in the comments is typing, wow, your kids are never going to learn how to pick up after themselves if the robot is always doing it. Well, these toys are for my daughter who is two. So yes, mom and dad need a break. And if you have a dog with a lot of dog toys that get left out, the Z70 should also be able to pick up a lot of those too. The vacuum only picks up the soft stuffed animal type toys right now and it just throws the toys with everything else like the socks and tissues. Eventually, Roborock says it will be able to sort different types of items in separate storage areas, so that will be pretty sweet. But we're pretty close to being able to have a robot like Rosie from the Jetsons automatically putting things away for us. I want to point out that this Z70 robot vacuum is running beta software, so there are some hiccups I've run into. You might be like, Reed, if you run into any issues, just look at the manual. Well. Do you want to see the manual? Check this out. It's just a bunch of blank pages. Obviously, they sent me the robot vacuum before the manual is finished. Like I said, beta software. And this vacuum doesn't even come out for another month or so, but I want to share a few of the limitations that I ran into at the time of filming, and obviously things could change by the time it's released. First is the automatic pickup does not work on carpet. I think analyzing fabric items like a sock that is on carpet could be difficult. Again, this could change, but that's where it is right now. The other thing is the arm will only grab certain shoes, mainly sandals since it's easy for the arm to grab it. And even though it doesn't grab tennis shoes automatically right now, no items that can be picked up found. It has the physical ability since I've done it with the manual controls. Roborock says the list of items that it can pick up will grow with software updates. It's actually pretty interesting watching the vacuum analyze the shoe and then position itself behind the shoe to grab it easier. Honestly, it's incredible seeing it in person. But as you can imagine, the arm sometimes misses when trying to grab a shoe or sock. If it does miss, it will try again, but I have seen it end up failing on a shoe that it's been able to pick up before. The vacuum for some reason would also have worse navigation when it was carrying a shoe around the house. I think the object avoidance sensitivity is turned up too high while carrying something with the arm, and sometimes it didn't make it to the storage area, which is weird because the shoe right before this got stored completely fine. This is brand new technology and we've never seen anything quite like this in a house before, so I think it would be unrealistic to expect the robot to be perfect every time right now. Oh, and Roborock now supports Matter. It didn't seem like it was working at first, but then I updated my Matter controller, which is the Apple TV, and then it worked. It had more functionality than I thought it would have. Like I can automate what room it cleans when all the phones are away. Awesome. The Z70 hardware is great, and it's really good about picking things up off the ground. And any little bug that I ran into could easily be fixed with firmware updates, which I'm sure Roborock will keep fixing because it's pre-release software. For the sake of not making this video an hour long, I'm going to quickly go over some of the cleaning highlights. The suction power can go up to 22,000 pascals, so it has plenty of power to clean your carpets and floors. There are dual spinning mops, which is what I prefer for mopping, and the mops can also automatically detach in the dock if it's just vacuuming. The vacuum can lift up to not get stuck, and it has star sight instead of lidar to map out the house. I've talked about this star sight before, and I still prefer it over lidar. For mapping, it's pretty much the same, but it's more accurate at detecting objects to not get stuck. So I like that. Plus, without a little LiDAR sensor on top, it keeps a really slim profile to go under furniture. Of course, it has a self-cleaning dock that can wash the mop, auto-empty the vacuum dustbin, and add cleaning solution to the mop water. As I mentioned earlier, Roborock did something different on the Z70 compared with the other Sorrows vacuums. 
Instead of the duo divide, they added the free flow main brush. It has these little grooves that can cut hair as the brush spins, since there's a little blade that moves back and forth, similar to an electric razor. Even though the duo divide has a 0% tangle rate, Roborock went with this design instead so they could fit the arm inside the vacuum. The side brush is similar to the other Saros 10 and 10R. It can lift up to be tucked away if needed, extend out to clean the corners, and it does a great job at not getting hair stuck in it. It's impressive how well the Z70 cleans, especially since there's a whole arm stuffed in there. So now that you've seen the Z70 in action, do you think a robot vacuum with an arm is the future? I think we're entering a new era of smart home technology. Things like millimeter wave, AI in the voice assistants, and new robotic arms doing chores in the house. It's kind of wild all these crazy things that we can do now that were not possible a few years ago but there are some slight growing pains as this new technology matures. Of course, I wish every brand new technology worked perfectly right away, but it doesn't. It's still fun seeing companies push the limits with technology to move things forward. Even if you're not an early adopter to brand new tech like a robot arm popping out of a vacuum, it could still pave the way to something you end up getting down the road. The Rubarock Z70 is still an amazing robot vacuum. It's so much fun to remote control, it's almost magical watching it pick things up off the ground, and it's really good at cleaning the floors. I have links in the description to check out more, and thanks for watching. Whoever took Lammy, they're gonna go to timeout. No, Dad, not me. You're in timeout.